Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. <laughs> All right, we're going. We're rolling. We're live. Right on. Well, I'm extra excited as I told you guys about this. Yeah, no, we're super stoked to be a part of it. I I kind of want to take this podcast in like a more entrepreneurial route and right. like sit down and talk with more businesses because I just find it really fascinating. Yeah. And like you guys specifically, I think it's really really cool. Yeah, no, that's super cool. Um, what kind of material do you typically cover? Uh, pretty much just like I mean, it'll be friends. Then I've had some like various guests that I guess I guess the most businessy one I've done is my buddy started the fidget spinner trend. Which like w- that was pretty thing? interesting. Like started the whole. Trend. He started the spark because I think the patent for the original fidget spinner came out in like the 1970s or something roughly like that. But okay. he's like the reason it went viral and whatnot. Did he get like a chunk of that? Like, was he involved with? Like, I'm trying to think of like, did he get royalties or did he like actually design or like get out the product or how mm, was he? He got it popular. Okay. I think that's fair to say. Okay. And he was one of two, I believe, uh, of like the first founding fidget spinners or whatever. <laughs> and it, he he originally started like selling those things Twitter for like 15. Yeah, yeah. On Instagram. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was saying. Like, was he actually involved with like creating the product? Or did he just have one and spun it around a bunch and people were like... He, like, found a distributor over in China, and okay. then the first one came in, and it was kind of rough, and then he got the second model, and he's like, this could sell. Okay. And then he just started marketing on social media, he, hitting up, like, influencers and whatnot, and they'd play with it, <laughs> and I then he uh, sent it out. I yeah, no, we... we uh, no, I, th- I was like, oh, those are those are stupid, you know, I'm not going like, to look, look, look at them, but no, <laughs> we got, like, super sleek ones, and we were like, oh, these are pretty fun. Yeah, right? <laughs> Yeah, you make fun of them because you're no, like, oh, every... No, that was her. She made fun of them. She yeah, made fun I, of them I, hard. I had it. And then I got car. her a silver one or something like that, like a fancy-looking one, and she was like, oh, shit. <laughs> 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 she was played with it all the time. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. It's one of those things you make fun of, and then you actually get one, and you're like, right, well, this right. might be the best toy ever yeah, invented. Yeah. That's good. That's funny. Well, awesome. So what is Spriggy Jeans for someone who has, like, never heard of them? Okay. You got this one. Okay, yeah. So it's basically, we like curate like a selection of you know like rare from vintage or um, like name brand apparel. Um, not necessarily always rare, but that's kind of what we go after. Um, but anywhere from like seventies to early two thousands, um, sweatshirts, t shirts, uh, any sort of band apparel, you know, just clothing in general. But we specialize in vintage denim, so like the customization and distressing of jeans. So that's how we actually started. So that's like our roots. But yeah, no, now we just. Uh, sell a mix of just vintage apparel really very cool so where do you get it from originally like where do we source our stuff from Mm -hmm. um so we do like thrift stores antique malls garage sales um we buy out people's closets just pretty much any way we could find something like you know we've uh, created some um relationships with some suppliers and other people that we work with you know to source and get like uh um, more in as we grow you know because we're like our (laughs) <laughs> we're selling so much more product than when we first started. Mm-hmm. It's a lot harder to just rely on the two of us to get it in. So we have some relationships in order to get apparel. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. So as simple as finding like a retailer and then buying it from them and then just flipping it? Or do you guys kind of like add some value, maybe like customize it a little bit or make it? Yeah, so um, vintage, like reselling is really popular and it's been around forever, you know, whether that's like furniture or, you know, people always flip stuff. But, like, vintage clothing particularly has been hot for a few years, as I'm sure you could probably, you know, notice it's a pretty popular trend. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, there's a huge Instagram community of people that resell clothing. And we didn't even know that when we started or got into it how popular it was. Um, We had, like, we didn't have any intention of starting a business either. So we would just go out, um, find some clothing, you know, just kind of as a way to make extra money, um, find clothing from, you know, thrift stores or whatever. And then, yeah, with the denim, you know, we um, customize it, cut it, distress it, and that adds value to it. But, yeah, there's a lot of money in vintage clothing. Like, when you're f- talking about stuff that's 20, 30 years old, it's rare. The, you know, it's a scarcity. There's not a lot of it. So that, like, already adds value to it. So it's kind of just like we're, you know, mining gems out there when we're out looking for stuff. Wow. Wow. So how did you guys get started? Um, I had worn a pair of vintage Levi's to Rush Week here at Missouri State, and I had a bunch of people asking me to make them some. So it kind of just escalated from there. It was his idea to yeah. start selling them. And yeah, like she came back from her rush week, um, yeah. her first year here, and she was, like, super stoked. It was like, everybody loved my jeans, everybody, whatever, you know. They were just some old Levi's that we'd found for at a thrift store because um, we've been thrifting together forever. It's mm-hmm. kind of one of the things that, like, tied in our relationship when we look back at it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was, like, 
let's sell them. So yeah, we started just going out and finding denim around town. Um, and then uh, started posting them up on the uh, the Girls Sell Your Stuff Facebook page. It's okay, yeah, yeah. It's a Missouri State group here of, like, only the Missouri State girls. And we would post them, and people would just, like, go crazy over it. Yeah, so we'd be <laughs> I've heard of that page, like, a million yeah, times. Yeah. It sounds it's like a really, really cool it's resource. It's really popular. There's, I don't know, probably, like, 15,000 people in it. It's pretty big. 50,000? 15. Oh, I was That like might be overdoing yeah. it, but I think. <laughs> no, it's a popular page, yeah. But, no, we uh, started throwing stuff on there, just jeans. Like, we'd cut them up and mess them up, you know, like, distress them and post them. And it was, like the response was crazy like it was overwhelming how like high the demand was for this so you guys are just doing this for fun Mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. i mean like i'd always you know work like three four jobs at a time just you know make (laughs) just to pay for like my shitty car or whatever you know just to Mm -hmm. eat food and everything like we both she needed a job and i was working part-time yeah this was all within the first week of coming here yeah so i mean like like the first yeah (laughs) because she came like straight out of high school to missouri state Mm -hmm. i transferred from you know a junior college so it was both our first year here okay even though i was two years ahead of her but yeah within the first couple weeks of school or living here we you know we were already like stumbled upon a business that's yeah. insane yeah. yeah no it was a it was a really cool um just a really cool way to break in springfield for us mm-hmm. um but yeah no so we were starting to post them and everybody you know there's this huge demand and we were making money people were coming by our apartment just right off campus and every um night. every night <laughs> every which we <laughs> which was like against our lease and like <laughs> <laughs> people just coming in and packs you know groups of people together and like we didn't know anyone and just like are they are they drug dealing up there? yeah right no no, no we're, we're still yeah, in jeans yeah, I literally, swear. you know yeah um, my, my mom and people would make jokes like that like people you're gonna people are gonna think you're selling drugs you uh-huh know? you're like i'll fuck them but um <laughs> but yeah no they sc- like were buying us out and we were making all this money you know and people were like paying us cash and it was so cool like you know making money for yourself is just like it's just an it's so much different, you know, than when you got working for a job or something like that. Like mm-hmm. knowing that you actually made it, it's, it's it's cool. It was like addicting, really. I mean, it is, and um, it changed our whole lives, like for right from the start. It mm-hmm. and it gave us like a purpose, you know, which was something we were kind of looking for in a new town, a new school, and everything. So, mm-hmm. um, new restart. Yeah, yeah, no, it was a c- and it was a cool start. Yeah, Andy had a part time job at Journeys at the mall. Yeah, I still. And that I, didn't yeah, last long. I worked at like Journeys <laughs> shoe store. Like I'd worked there through high school or whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, so I extended that here because I had one, and I was working there, and I hated it, um, and I, so I was able to quit that, quit that like right away. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, which was really cool. Um, and I never had to try and find a job here. Yeah, she never had nice. to try and find a job, so <laughs> she got off. You know. Yeah. It was uh, pretty cool for her. So um, you haven't had to work since you've been in Mo State. Not since I've been here. Nope. Well, that's I awesome. Mean, not a real job i guess <laughs> well it's I probably mean, fun honestly yeah, it's no, probably it's doesn't yeah, feel no. like work <laughs> i mean the typical like if you like it's crazy because we never thought like one we never thought we'd own like our own business or work for ourselves but we also never like thought that we'd have a passion for vintage yeah. clothing or clothing in general i mean it changed her majors mm-hmm. she came in as a nutrition i was thinking about doing like yeah or dental nut- hygiene nutrition or dental hygiene or something like that and then i changed still my kind major. of uncertain didn't yeah, know for sure yeah and then i changed my major to fashion after this so so quickly found out, yeah, she's yeah. got a good like knack for it too. And I'm a I'm a marketing major. I just kind of was like business major, just kind of like didn't know what, what else to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, like I found out like all the connections and ties with what I was going to school for. It actually was it was perfect. So um, yeah, I'm also a marketing major. We yeah. probably had a class together at some yeah, point. Yeah, no, probably. Um, I'm s- I'm finally got to my uh, my upper division like actual marketing classes. So yeah, very so cool. Good yeah. for you. Yeah, no, it's pretty uh, it's pretty cool how many you know like <laughs> we'll be talking about like online marketing or you're using social media or all these things in class that you learn and it's like that's what i'm doing mm-hmm. so yeah it was kind of gave me a cool head start with you know my degree that's awesome that's awesome because i feel like right now in school we're kind of like being thrown all this information and we don't necessarily know how to apply it so you're probably retaining it a lot better because i mean if you see something you like in class you're like oh application i can apply this to springy jeans yeah no and that's i mean he like does all the time too yeah and sure. it's cool because like awesome. a lot of people are like my degree is useless or I don't know, or, you know, school is a waste of time. And I've gotten there too, you know, struggling with like, you know, stay, should I stay in? Do I need school? Mm-hmm. But it's been such an asset for me. Um, yeah. Especially like running a business. Cause I've learned so much just, you know, like the introduction to, cause like you can run a business and be successful on your own, which is like without knowing any like fun business fundamentals or like, you know, about supply chains or about customer service or, you know, relationships and you can be fine and you can operate what g- great. But like by having that schooling behind you, and by having that as like a base and like a for like a, a foundation to work off of, it's like it's major excelled me. Like all the stuff that I would have probably figured out 
as we, you know, as our business aged and went on. Just through experience. Yeah, through experience, I was able to just instantly tie in with what we're working now. And it's been really impactful, I think, for me. That's for awesome. Our business. That's awesome. That's very cool, the application of yeah. it all. Yeah, no, it's not I, as hypothetical. Right, yeah, I get it. Like, hear about it, and they're talking about, you know, supplier relationships. Like, they were talking in class, like, and I, Trevor, and I, I never try to be, and, you know, she's the same way. We don't want to be like, yeah, we own a business. We run a business, like, every day in our classes because uh-huh. I feel like, you know, we just kind of look like <laughs> – it make kind of oh, look like – Oh, it's that guy. Yeah, man. yeah, oh, yeah, like, like re- driving it in. But in one of my classes, they were talking about supplier relationships and, like, how it's typical, you know, for, like, your supplier to shake your hand or pay for your food or whatever, you know, when you have dinners with them, like, when you're working. And we've experienced that, working with suppliers and wholesalers before. So it was cool for me being like, yeah, no, he, he bought me a beer, like, you know, just talking about it in class. So just that, like, I was evil, easily able to make connections with what I'm learning. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really, really cool. It's it, not many people can say that they have an artistic outlet that they're also making money from. Yeah, that's uh, one thing, you know, that people, like, have said a lot about us is, like, you know, we're, we are creating content and it is art and that's one of the way how we present, you know, the clothing through our Instagram. So it is the whole aesthetic of it. Yeah, the whole aesthetic of it. You know, it is it's it is art, and that's uh, it's kind of interesting to to think in just like that how we are creating stuff. Absolutely you know, through clothing, mm-hmm. and that's that's really impressive to me because I don't think I have much of that like fashion eye. Mm-hmm. Oh, that could sell. That mm-hmm. could sell. Yeah. But I'm sure as time goes on, you're like, no, that'll that'll work versus that. You'll, you'll yeah. see, like, another product online and be like, nah, that probably won't be as effective in comparison to this on over here. And we start to learn what sells and what doesn't, like, every single time we have a story sale. Like, we notice what sells or, like, what will just sit around for right. a few weeks kind of thing. Yeah, no, because we have, a, like, a really honed-in product line, like, what we sell and, like, um, really specific with our, um, with our followers, you know, our customers. Like, they know what to expect and we know what they're going to want. Mm. So that's been really, you know, beneficial for us because when we're, we're out, you know, sourcing or hunting for clothing, looking around or dealing with people, we can, you know, make that like um, that, I don't know, we can make that like that clear cut decision like, ah, now we don't need that. It's not going to worry about it. Like, that's cool, but it's not going to sell for us. So it makes it really easy for us to get product in that we know is going to make us money. Understandable. Understandable. Well, I wanted to talk to you guys about this. Uh you guys ran a, I think it was like an 8K giveaway. Was yeah. that right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I saw, like, I, s- I think I was, Kyle had told me about mm-hmm. you, like the person that referred me to Springy Jeans. Mm-hmm. He had told me about you, and I looked you up right around that time. I think it was right before you guys started the 8K giveaway. Mm-hmm. And I saw that you posted that, and then within, like, what, like three, four days, you guys gained, like, 3,000 followers. It and was I was also seeing it being posted by, like, every single girl I knew in yeah. Springfield, Missouri. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I think it was within the first day, wasn't it? Um, first day, yeah. Well, so we've been doing those giveaways um, for Since a, the beginning. for a while. Yeah. Like we were just like when we've hit 500 followers, you know, way back when. Yeah. Um, we were like, it's just oh, a let's pair of jeans the first time. Yeah, we were like, let's do a giveaway. <laughs> let's give away a pair of jeans. You know, probably had like a hundred comments or something like that. Forty likes on the post, or maybe a hundred likes on the post, which um, you know, we got a c- we got a good response from it for where we were at. So we were just like, we'll do them every 500. So those have been like really beneficial and impact like in growing our business um everybody does giveaways you know but like for whatever reason ours have always been successful like people people love our giveaways um and they look forward to it so yeah no and um our last one yeah like you were saying at uh, eight thousand, we grew like way bigger than we expected from it because yeah and overall we got like over three thousand followers from it from just that one giveaway post in a week yeah which was yeah, in awesome. A week. <laughs> so, yeah, it was good growth followers for followers are buyers. Like, they're yeah, customers. No. So it's each new follower is a new customer, which is a reason to keep trying to get more <laughs> all the time. And the awareness. You yeah. know, all, right. the, all the guys that may not know or just, or just people sure. in general that may not know. Yeah. And then they're like, well, I definitely know who Springy Jeans is right. at least. Yeah, just the familiarity. Because, like, as we, you know, as we grow as a business, and I'm sure we'll talk about, like, our future later, um, that brand awareness as we progress into making our own apparel which is something we're looking into, you know, or hope to do at some point. Um, It it grows a lot further than, like, the clothing we're selling now. So just growing our brand and our awareness, you know, is it's really important. And so, uh, yeah, we love the giveaways. Absolutely. Well, you guys might appreciate knowing this. I thought this was kind of funny. But I – so I used to run an Instagram account. I think it was, like, 200,000 followers. It was basically a fan account. 
and I literally stole word for word your guys like <laughs> giveaway, and I did my own <laughs> giveaway on there. Right. And um, yeah, the 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 conversion I will say wasn't as successful, but it was. It, it, it yeah. worked. It worked. Yeah. No, that's cool. I it mean, was a cool little experiment. Right. I'm like, okay, I needed a, a basis yeah. on like where to go. And I thought you, the formatting and whatnot of your caption and everything, it looked very, very professional. Yeah, I'm not sure where we got. I think we just – we've been using the same one for, you know, like probably the past five giveaways. Um, and we just, you know, adjust it for like whatever we're at. But, yeah, no, it is – it seems like it is a really clear format. People mm-hmm. understand it, um, which I think is super important, you know, when you're doing a giveaway because a lot of them you read and they're really confusing, like – Or you have it to was do very too clear. much. Yeah. 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 The or ones where you have to follow a ton of people or do, like, a million different things, people don't want to have to worry about. Yeah. So I think it's important that it's simple. And, yeah, we put, a, like, a lot of effort goes into them behind the scenes, you know, of just, like – like curating exactly what we're going to give away, like the timing of when we announce it, um, just like our page layout, the product we have available, because, you know, we convert a lot of those new followers into sales, like instantly, mm-hmm. like as wow. as it's give going on. Because people come, they see our page, and, you know, if we have stuff that's available or we're posting items, we'll make the money back that we're giving away, in, you know, literally in the first couple hours of the giveaways. Wow. So um, it's, an easy, it's an easy way to look. You know, it makes it really easy to give out a lot of cool shit that people want because we're like, well, we'll make it back and, you know, quickly. It's a good look, too. It's a good look. It's like, oh, this they care about their followers. They care about their customer base enough to give them all of this. And you guys yeah. gave out a lot of stuff for the we AK do. one. We keep adding more, too. Yeah, no, each one because, I mean, we don't want them to grow sale. And I feel like they have, like, our followers have an expectation at this point, like, when the giveaways come around, like, go big get or go home. Yeah, go big bigger, or go home. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, just subtly, like, we used to just, it was just jeans. And then we introduced, um, like, some apparel with it, you know. And it was like a jean jacket and jeans. But we started throwing cash in there. And obviously, everybody loves yeah, that. Yeah, the cash has been, I think, the most important part for sure. That's what people care about the most, I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who does? And I would. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. You can give me 100 cash. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, we know we're getting ready to actually have another one here in the next week or so. Do you guys have any expectations before doing them? Are you like, okay, I want like, yeah, do you try to set any goals or you just kind of throw it out there, do the best you can, best with timing, best day of the week, and then um, kind of hope for the best? I well, think the goal would be 15 for our next one. Yeah, we'd like, I mean, we'll reach, I would hope that we'll reach 15,000. But yeah. yeah, it's, um, there are a lot of like, you know, we've hit a lot of benchmarks and stuff that like are, um, as we grow that are like, uh, repetitive like our last ones you know um we would gain a thousand and that was consistent to 1500 to 2000 it's interesting how that works out you know how the growth works and how it's like there are patterns in it and then with this last one gaining 3000 we took a little bit of a bigger jump so yeah no i would hope we get four to five um it just depends on if people you know will continue to share and post about it and comment um we don't know you know like are people gonna get tired of them we don't know yet. It hasn't happened. So uh, it's unlikely when yeah. you throw that money on the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean it'll be a bummer if we have, and that's a major flop. But we haven't hit it yet. So yeah, we're gonna keep doing them. But I also think people realize there's nothing to lose from reposting it on their story. And I mean, I don't know. There's no reason not to participate in it. So it's not annoying. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's I guess the yeah. honest truth. That's I don't find it annoying. The most important part is making sure it doesn't get annoying. Yeah, because I mean, we yeah. do them every. We do them every month, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. but we just don't want to get to the point where people are tired of seeing our stuff or content. So Cause like we got to limit them. When you get on Instagram and it's every girl's story, because that happens with me, too, since I follow a lot of the people from here. When I get on Instagram, it's on every single person's page, which is cool for me. But yeah, we're like, I wonder how that is for everybody else. Yeah. It, it didn't annoy me. I was well. Also, I saw it from the business aspect, and right. I was like, "That's very interesting." Yeah, That's, yeah. You know what it reminded me of on like a micro scale was that that shout out of that bikini girl like sitting backwards. Yeah, yeah. No, we get a pretty like a, I'd say it's like a viral effect around here, especially. It really is um, like a local viral effect. Yeah, no, and it, I mean, because we'll have poc- we have pockets of followers, you know, like around the country, um, and it's cool because you can see in like where they come from. Like pe- we'll see like our followers that we know of, you know, like have built like with people in California you can tell the California followers that see that content and like oh. come to our page or the ones from like where we're from, like St. Joe KC, the people you will see them sharing, reposting it. And then you can like, cause we'll click on, you know, we love clicking on people's um, pages and like reading their bios and stuff as they come in and you can just see that that's where they're coming from. So it's really cool watching oh. it happen real time. That those analytics. Important. Yeah. Yeah. No, super. Yeah. Super important. So how scalable is this? Are you guys able to ship out or how do you, how do you distribute it? I guess. Uh, we ship all the time um, to everywhere in the world at this point. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, um, I'd say about half of things are shipped. Yeah, probably within the first six months, you know, of operating, we uh, started shipping out orders. Um, our very first person that wanted to buy from us, you know, that wasn't here locally, was in Canada. Um, so we were like blown away. We were like, mm-hmm. what the? Well, like, how did we like, you know, how'd she find about here? How, how'd you hear of us? Um, and it just started to grow, f- you know, from there. People like, as we like made it clear that we, s- like, shipping is an option, you know, um, it's like probably, probably half of our orders now mm-hmm. are shipped. Oh, very cool. Yeah, very so cool. a pretty high percentage of it. And um, other than that, you know, people can do local pickup, which is the easiest, you know, if you're around in the area. We've had people that have <laughs> not wanted to spend the $7 shipping charge or $5 shipping yeah, charge. Yeah, even $5 and drive like an hour. Drive an hour to come pick up their... <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, because they don't want to wait on shipping. Because um, it's part of the experience. Yeah, it's part know? of the experience. I mean, we're fine with it. We just like yeah. to let them know, you know, like we can ship it if you want. Uh huh. But yeah, no, I mean, um, we have to do a ton of shipping with our orders. So yeah, it's been... Uh, yeah, and I mean, we've dabbled around with a website before um uh for a few months and i mean it, we just weren't ready for it yet uh but yeah i know we shipped orders through there and i mean it, it is it's scalable to that aspect we've gotten it down you know with just our processes of um getting people's you know information and printing it out and making it a pretty easy uh and fun packaging that's a new thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah we get like i got sh- halloween packaging and it seems to be a big hit oh nice <laughs> yeah so um I would never have thought of that. Yeah. That's that's creative. Yeah, people people seem to love it. Um, it gets people to repost it when they get their package, and they're like, oh, like cute packaging, love my new shirt, and then they post it on their story, so that is a nice, like... It's a nice touch. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this is safe to say. It seems like you're kind of like the artsy, you know, like the aesthetic um, of the clothing. I, I do a lot of the jeans and that kind of thing. He actually does most of the layout of the entire page. He's more of... Of the Instagram page? Yeah. Okay, absolutely. So yeah, he, no, a lot of people don't know. Yeah, a lot does of does the format. Yeah. I do, I help pick everything out, obviously, and the jeans and stuff like that. But so no. you're more apparel and you're more like business marketing. For yeah, sure. so I do a lot yeah. of the business stuff. And I mean, we have like have our like designated roles that we've, you know, like just felt out from running it together. Um, play we'll to your strengths. Yeah, mm-hmm. play to our strengths. And I'm the organized one, so I do all the shipping. And then he does all the. Like yeah, packaging. I like post the content and I right. do the packaging, you know, and I like f- format like the our page format a lot goes into like the way we actually format it, like what we post in an order. Um and the actual pictures themselves, I typically take them and arrange them um or take the pictures or which a lot of people don't know. I mm-hmm. I'm very involved with it. Um it's just something I've been good at, you know. I guess I didn't know that I had a knack for arranging clothing aesthetically, but it's something that I'm good at. So Yeah, it's um, fantastic. The page looks yeah. great. Yeah, no, thanks. We appreciate that. Yeah, like I said, we put a lot of work into it. A lot goes in that I don't know if people can tell, but I think when you like, it's one of those things that you can put, can't put your finger on when you see it, but you would like it. Like you wouldn't know mm. why, maybe not necessarily know why you like why our page has such an aesthetic that pulls people because like they don't probably don't know that we stagger like the 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 person versus clothing layout ratio, um, the way that they're like the pillars look Get variety. Yeah, the way that like the vertically look, the way they're horizontally look, like just the way it's. What organized. do you mean by pillars? Like, so, like, you know, like the, the grid, like, on an Instagram, like, the so row So, if you it. post, then the entire, maybe the left column might be this kind of yeah. appeal? Yeah, mm-hmm. or we, oh like, we, we yeah, try yeah. not to make two, like, you know, we just put a lot of work into making it seem balanced. So, we don't have, like, three rows of, like, rows of people in a row, followed by clothing. Like, I don't know. A lot goes into it, basically. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so we, um, that's something we've always been cognizant of. I don't know if it comes from, like, a marketing standpoint, or, like I said before, mm-hmm. I manage social media page for, like, what, like, 20 months or something like that so i could i could definitely see the work that goes into it right. but to somebody who's more of a novice i feel like the appeal is very clear within yeah. even the first like six pictures or right. something like yeah. that which is something that like we've always made uh, we've always wanted to make a point of the bec- first impression when you click on our instagram yeah sure. we wanted to have like a really quick draw to our page because you know i mean it the part of the reason that selling on instagram works so well is because you're on people's feet like where they're you know scrolling through looking at just their regular you know like their social media engagement just interacting and so if you can have that aesthetic pictures that people enjoy and it's like and it just kind of blends in with their regular stuff we found that it works really well for us to convert that into sales so how often do you post we try to post at least one thing on the page a day and then at least a couple things on the story just to stay active we used to be a lot better about it like multiple like one post to multiple posts a day um, we've gotten to, we use the story so heavy to actually sell our product because we don't want to ever like spam or slam the page 
um, because that just gets annoying, you know, people like following us and seeing our stuff all over the place. Mm -hmm. So we heavily use a story because it's not as in your face. So that's where most of our sales are. Are you guys able to from. use the swipe up feature now that isn't it like 10,000 followers? Yeah, no, we can use it. We just haven't. We just um, haven't hooked it up yet. We, like I said, we used to have a website that we used. Um, uh, like we transitioned because I'm sure you've seen the way we do our story sales. Um, or maybe you have roughly, to, yeah, roughly. Rough, yeah. So uh, we'll post, we'll post stuff like on there, like on the story, like um, we'll announce that we're having a story sale, and that just means that we're gonna post product for sale, like one picture, one item per slide with the size and price listed, basically like a website, you know, and people will swipe up on it and let us know that they want it, and then they'll follow through with like PayPal, Venmo, or um, Cash App to, to to purchase it. Oh, so they're actually sending all their information through Instagram DMs? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay. And then we keep just a Google Doc of everyone's information for shipping and do it that way. Yeah, so we copy oh, they okay. copy their address and mm -hmm. stuff that they send us. We put it on the post it on the doc. And then we go from there and we put it in, you know, the uh, the shipping platforms that we use and then print them out that way. Interesting. Okay, yeah. very interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um uh, we've gotten so heavily using that to actually sell this stuff that we've limited off, like kind of set back on how much we actually post on the page, mm -hmm. just because you know we're still being active and we're selling, and that's our like that's our avenue. But yeah, we're working a lot harder now to uh, make sure it's a little bit more regular to keep up with our growth. Okay, understandable. So, what social media platform? I'm assuming Instagram. Would yeah. you say has been like the most successful for you guys? We only use Instagram. Really? So, yeah. Um, we have a Facebook just because you have to link your Instagram to a Facebook, but we don't do anything through it. The posts just automatically go to it, basically. Yeah, so which I, when every time we tell anybody that, they're always surprised. But that's the only platform that we use. It's the only one that we engage in. It's the only one that we sell mm -hmm. off of. It's my favorite, personally. Yeah, no, so. I mean, we, d we think it's, it, it's a lot of favorites, you know. Um, it's the easiest to use. And it's, like, basically made for businesses. Like, in, like it's a really easy way to post and your product and people to see it and th i mean they've added shopping features onto instagram so you can use it like a website like you could shop people's instagrams um so yeah no it works out perfect for us did you guys ever think that you'd be making money off running an instagram page never <laughs> no never never yeah no it like never crossed my mind that like we don't a business or i don't a business you know like from my perspective never and like in my wildest dreams like it wasn't even anything that was ever that i like had ever thought of or was ever on my radar um, but now that like we've stumbled into it, you know, and that we're running it, and it's been success been successful, I couldn't I couldn't imagine anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no yeah, it's definitely working for ourselves is the way for us to go. Right, right. That's really cool. That's really cool. Who knows what other avenues that might open up in the future as well? Right. Yeah. I mean, for s for some reason this doesn't pan out someday. Um, it's given us a lot. We've learned so much from it that we definitely think we could carry this over to you know other markets to other areas so yeah we've learned a lot from it already well, good for you guys good for yeah, you guys thank you. appreciate it where do you guys see springy jeans in like the next five years um i'd say once he graduates next year we'd like to look into doing a storefront like brick and mortar type deal um we want to get our website back up and running yeah we want to be able to automate Just everything expanding honestly in any way we can yeah, so, like, you know, scale is the question that everybody, run, like, runs by. So, like, how can you scale this? How can you grow this? How can you make this, like, an, you know, a full-blown business? Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of ways to do it, and there are a lot of ways that it's been done because, you know, people have made huge businesses out of reselling, you know, out of vintage clothing. Um, but, yeah, we, so we want to automate the way that we sell through our website, um, just make it easier because we don't have to, like, actually – that way we don't have to be, like, answering everybody's messages, like, making that effort. Because if you do use a website, it does all that for you. So we think that's an easy way for us to grow. But, yeah, we want to look into a storefront. We want to have more pop-ups around the state or, or beyond because our pop-ups have been really successful for us. It's like the one chance, you know, where we get to have, like, that retail um, selling, you know, uh, location. Um, but, yeah, no, we got, we've got big Oh, is that what you mean by pop-up? Oh, like yeah. Like having, like, your own store? Yeah, no, we've – I don't know. I guess oh, you might wow. have seen okay. about it. Yeah, we've had seven or eight pop-ups yeah. so far. Oh, um, really? It's just yeah. a one-day store um, where we take everything we have, and people can come and, like, try on, buy in person. Yeah, no, they've been crazy. I'm surprised you haven't seen any of about them. We had one just no, the other week. No. Yeah, we had one downtown. So we'll rent out a, a location somewhere, um, whether it's downtown or we've been doing them on C Street. Um, and it'll be, like, a day-long event or a, a day event, like 12 to 4, yeah. 12 to 6. And people will come in, you know, and shop us like a store. We'll have all kinds of product in. They can try it on and, you know. Wow. Yeah, and we've gotten huge responses from that. Um, they've been really successful for us. 
So yeah, they're probably one of our favorite things to do as a business, like for Springy. They're really cool. They're really yeah. Cool I was things. not familiar. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm. It's uh. I was surprised by how many people you know haven't like heard of pop ups or haven't known what they were. So it's interesting, you know, to hear you like didn't know that we were doing them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. I, I didn't know you guys were doing them, and right. also didn't even know what they were until just now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. A lot of a lot of businesses will do them. I'm um, just like a one day or you can have like. I mean, a pop-up can be six months if you want it to be. You mm-hmm. know, it can be in a location for what, however long you want. Um, but, yeah, we found that just, like, a day event for us is really cool. I mean, we gain hundreds of followers typically when we do them. Oh, wow. Yeah. And People like bring their friends, their grandparents. <laughs> yeah. Their dogs, their sisters. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Yeah. Literally. Yeah, and, I mean, at this last one we had, we made as much as we made in the p- whole previous month. Oh, wow. Yeah, in that one four-hour period. Mm-hmm. So, so how do you get the traffic? Just organically through people coming through? in downtown we Springfield or we promote again. through Instagram yeah. really yeah all the promotion through there maybe a little bit because this last one was downtown people just walking by but I think it's mostly just people that already follow us yeah it's a pretty big word of mouth thing when we mm-hmm. post about them and I mean by now we're, we, we were so built up and I think we have that credibility that when people you know see that we're like having an event or something like they're coming mm-hmm. they know that you know they know that we're going to put on a good event for them so um yeah it's we, we post on there a few times like the week before we give a week notice um, post what's going to be there, and uh, this last one we had to have had you know over a th- over a thousand fifteen yeah. hundred people come through. Wow! Um, All yeah. within the first two hours. Couple hours. Yeah. yeah. So it was a really big event. Wow. Yeah. So we want to continue having those. You know, as time goes on. Do people enjoy kind of putting a face to the brand as well, like meeting you guys? Right. And I think it's funny how many people come in and they like all be folding jeans or something, and they'll be like, "Oh, do you work here?" And I'm just like. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. But no, we think it's cool, and I mean, we love it. We love it because there are a lot of people that do know us too and yeah. recognize us and like being able to like come and meet us and just like talk to us about things and yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a great way to meet you know our following, and it's good for the business. I think, like you said, to put a face to it. Um, it kind of you know like humanizes it. Almost. Right. Yeah. Because we have never been the best about like being personal on the page. Like, and we, that's kind of by design. We don't necessarily, like, want to. We don't want to make it about us. Yeah. So, like, you know, we don't do, um, like, we don't YouTube vlog on there. Or we don't typically, you know, like, post too much of our own personal stuff. But it's something that we're actually, we're trying more, you know, to build that brand around us. So something that we used to think, you know, was annoying that we didn't need to do, we now realize is a really important part of business. Mm. So. Um, How so? Why do you find importance in kind of putting your own faces on there? I mean, every time we do post a picture with one of our faces in it, it always does ten times better than a picture without, we've noticed. Yeah, I think it it, al- it does that, like, um, it kind of creates, um, turns, like, more like a public figure type thing, right? So it, it, like, brings that awareness to where people, if they see us around campus or if they see us out or whatever, like, that's Springy Jeans. They get to just instantly make that associate, like, it, it creates something out of Springy. Like, it makes it more than just an Instagram page. Like, and it puts it, like, people call me Springy Jeans. Like, right, like, hey, what up, Springy Jeans? Yeah, what up, Literally. Springy? Literally, that's how it goes. Like, what up, Springy? Like, that's, you know, we'll be out at downtown or whatever and be like, oh, it's sp- it's Springy Jeans. And so it, like, I just think it has a really good influence and impact on our business, you know, mm. in, in a positive way. Because mm-hmm. um, p- people, you know, they get to relate to us and just see that, you know, we're regular real people, too. Um, and, yeah, I think it just does a lot of good for it. Okay, understandable. Do you guys feel, like, obligated to always wear jeans? <laughs> I wish I did. I don't, yeah. but I should. See, I'm really into like, so I'm really into the clothing, like the you know the vintage like style, just all, all, like all of it. Like it's my whole closet. Um, so like since basically day like the day we started, it's been a huge change for me, um, just in the way I dress. I but she spotted I a little bit. She I spotted know, a little bit. I wear it all like the crew necks, the t-shirts, and everything. It's just I don't wear jeans very often, okay. unless unless it's a special occasion, but. I tried. I try to represent. Yeah. I guess no. I, I mean, I and, and that's part of it, you know. Since especially since we're doing fashion and style, like it's really important for us to show out. <laughs> like you know, w- whether that's just like wearing the apparel um, around school or when we're going out or like just on our regular day stuff. Because like I said, with people like learning and finding out who we are and like associating us with the business, it kind of creates that like that a little bit of that public figure thing where people see us wearing it. Like what she's got on, like oh those jeans I saw we post they posted those you mm. know like she's wearing them like type stuff. So yeah, I just think like the whole wearing it and uh, um, representing is it's it's pretty it's pretty important. That's a really good point. Yeah, because I was kind of messing with you guys whenever I said that, but that yeah. that totally makes sense that you would have to 
you know, present yourself accordingly mm-hmm. whenever right. you go yeah, out no. and whatnot. Um, it, it, and it is true. Like, it's something like, you know, do we do you wear the jeans? Do you wear the clothing? And it's like, yeah, we do. We really do. Yeah. Um, and, you know, give it, like. Everything we wear. Yeah, like, basically. giving her, like, aside from giving her shit. Like, she really, you know, it is a big thing to, like, to wear it. Mm-hmm. Um, or, like, all the old band tees. When people ask me about them, I love being like, oh, yeah, it's an original. Like, this is from the 80-whatever tour. That yeah. kind of thing. And just, like, showing that we do know, like, what it is. Yeah, we know what it is, and we wear it, we know the value, we enjoy wearing it. Because, I mean, probably the hardest part about selling vintage clothing, especially in, like, Springfield, Missouri, you know, like, the Midwest, Mm -hmm. like, it's pretty popular on the the coasts and has been for years, um, is that, like, that consumer education of getting them to understand the value, right? So, like, you can go to, like, the mall right now, and you can find, like, a champion sweatshirt for Mm -hmm. 50 bucks, like, brand new. Well, that same champion sweatshirt used or vintage 20, 30 years old, it has value in its own, right? So A different appeal. It has a different ap- – yeah, I mean, they're retroing everything now, so, like, you'll see the same stuff out. But just the fact that it is older and it's vintage and, like, it's a scarcity, that adds value to it. So, like, we're not just – you know, we don't just pull pricing out of our asses. We're not like, oh, this is older. You know, we found it. Let's ask the same price as, you know, what they're asking in stores. But, like, that's what it's worth. Mm. And we check those comps, you know – whether online and other platforms um because that's how you figure out the pricing is kind of comparing online and whatnot yeah we do a lot of research before we price things and put i don't know yeah and i mean like we make sure we know the value right and like we we have our own standardized pricing now right like so you'll see somewhere like a shirt selling for 10 bucks well Mm. we know we can get 25 for it or 30 for it because we know that's what our customers are willing to pay so there's a little bit of that you know like um uh, comparing y- and all that, but it's also like what how we sell and what we know we can get for items. Mm. But yeah, no, I mean, c- c- getting people aware that like a vintage Led Zeppelin tour shirt from like 1977 is not going to be 20 bucks. <laughs> like you're not, it's like it's not a 20 dollar shirt. That's a hundreds, maybe you know they can even be thousands of dollar T-shirts out there. Wow. So yeah, the just same thing with the jeans. Like I think a lot of people don't realize that the vintage jeans are worth a lot more than today's, and people online ask a lot more than we do. And right. I. That's something that I think we do need to work on is, like, making sure we let people know, like, vintage jeans are expensive, but you get what you're paying for. Like, yeah, it's like good quality, it's rare, like, all these things. Yeah, like, the vintage, like, so if you get on, like, Depop or eBay or, you know, any other, like, typical selling platforms that people use, like, the type of jeans that we sell for 50 to $75 mm-hmm. are selling for 135 to 150 wow. Like, there's a lot of value in vintage denim. And like or even depending where you are, there's places in New York that ask like 300 plus for jeans that we have like 50 bucks on. So it's just yeah, but That's getting crazy. people yeah, getting yeah. people aware of that to find out that like one, it's worth money, like actually worth more, like what we're asking, and two, that we're actually asking cheaper pricing than a lot of places. Mm-hmm. Um, it kind of you know that that perspective changes a lot for a lot of people, like as they shop from us or as we you know like let them know like this has value. So how I understand, like, the Led Zeppelin t-shirt or right. something like that that's going to be an original. I get how that would add value, but why the jeans specifically? Yeah. So Is it the old denim mm-hmm. or? They don't make denim like they used to, <laughs> but really they don't. Like, it's a different material. The sizing is different. The way the that it's the fit of it. Like, there's yeah. so much that goes into it. What um, about the comfort? Personally, like, as a girl, I think vintage jeans are more comfortable because they're meant to not like stretch out and all that kind of stuff and like they're just made at a higher quality right like you yeah. like made in usa like usa that's why made. they're all still around and yeah like they st- like if you buy like a <laughs> vintage pair of levi's or something you know that's like 30 40 years old it's gonna last you as long as a pair that you go buy from the store mm. just because it's that superior quality do realize that too as more people start wearing them because they're really popular with famous people especially like all the in famous Instagram girls all have like vintage jeans, and I think people are starting to realize that. Yeah, and I mean, like, and I get what you're saying. Like that value, like, how do you necessarily like quantify? Quanti- yeah, decide what the value is, and that's it's it's consumer and it's market driven. And like right now, like vintage denim's hot, like, and it has been for a few years. So I mean, there is pricing that people come up with, and it's like I don't know, maybe they just threw something on the wall at one point and was like, we'll see if we can get this for it, and it stuck. But, you know, like, as that's funneled down to us, like, we know what we can get for it. And we do compare it. We try, you know, we're not going to price gouge. Like, we're selling jeans now that, like, if you go to Urban Outfitters or somewhere else to shop, they're selling, like, the modern version of it for 100 bucks. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, like, that comparison, you know, if you go to the Levi's Alley, you can get, like, 
two for forty five, like two pairs of jeans for forty five dollars. But it's not that same. It's not the same value. It's not the same material. It's not the same durability. And when like you try them on, you realize it too. Yeah. yeah, people can definitely tell. Like when you wear vintage denim, it's it's like a just it's a better experience really wearing jeans. Mm-hmm. Okay, understandable, yeah. understandable. I guess I've never worn any, so right, I didn't right. know from, like, experience or anything. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean, there's, like, we're, we're a female-oriented page. Like, that's who we market to, but, like, we're selling men's clothing for the most part, other than the jeans. Like, the apparel, the tops, the tees, and all that stuff, it's, like, men's, it's men's stuff, like, in initially intended for men, you mm-hmm. know? So it's, u- but, I mean, it's unisex. But, yeah, dude, there's a huge, like, vintage denim for men, too. Like, I have some cool old vintage Levi's and stuff like that, um... And yeah, so it's there's a big market on both sides of it. We just ours is more geared towards women. Okay, understandable. Yeah, I think I really resonate with some of the teas, especially some of the teas you guys put on your st- stories, like today specifically. Th- they're really cool. I really, I'm yeah, not super yeah. into fashion or style right, or anything, right. but I was like, that's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. and that's kind of the effect we get a lot of the time. Like we'll have people following us, you know, that maybe they don't have a sense of style or like have you know anything particular that like they like to wear but they'll see stuff and they're like that's cool i want it yeah and that's kind of what happens with it that and was like my experience yeah post a lot of basics that you could wear no matter like what style you have like t-shirts you can wear with anything which i think definitely works for us since we do a lot of stuff that goes with everyday things yeah and that's like i said part of the thing of like getting her to wear this stuff or other people to wear it because then you get to like see the stuff we're selling and that's part of what we do on the page is we like posting people wearing our stuff because it's like here's the stuff and here's what it looks like but here's how you can wear it and that has a big influence in people to buy it okay understandable understandable do you guys kind of plan to go in a more male oriented route or you you found success with females so you'll think you'll stick with that i think we definitely like to incorporate men into the page more I yeah, always well try and get him to be on it. He just doesn't like. Yeah, like it's just it's because himself. like we've gotten so re- like people know what they expect, right? Like with our page or whatever. And it's pretty abrupt to just because if you've been on there, you know, it's it's women's apparel. It's women wearing the clothing. Mm-hmm. So when you throw something on like a guy wearing the stuff. The like it's just a big it's a big downtick in all like, you know, on all a the risk. metrics. There's yeah, a risk. And it's just like it'll, it'll turn people off to it. We'll lose followers from it. We. You know, we um, like I said, they don't do as nearly as well with the likes or anything like that. Um, but we've been like very progressively um, altering the page to where it seems more gender neutral. For sure. Mm. Yeah. So we're putting more a lot more. And that's been intentional. Floor. It's been yeah. intentional. Yeah. So okay. if you look at it, if you know, if you were to get on and scroll um, down at the bottom, it's a lot more like a lot Only more. Only me. <laughs> a lot more of just her wearing clothing. Yeah. Um, you know, all of it on girls being like marketed that way. But and even with the captions and the wording and the stuff like that, like it was a lot more girly. But yeah, we know. We, I mean, men men buy the stuff too, and men are you know men are a big market. Like yeah, well, why wouldn't they? I, I really right. do. Like I genuinely found a lot of the. I I resonate more with like the tees and like mm-hmm. I, I like sweatshirts like this, yeah, like the yeah, one you're sure. wearing. And some of those were really cool. Yeah, like no, the, I mean, the we, and one and right, yeah. and we do have men's men that buy from us, and but it's it is growing, it's growing, and we think like it shows that our efforts because we have put a lot of effort into it. Like mm-hmm. I said, to denutralize the page. Or to neutralize the page. Is there any specific mm-hmm. article of clothing that men kind of stray towards? Um, sweatshirts, yeah. yeah or yeah, next. sweatshirts for sure. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's pretty both ends. Like, we have a pretty good sample of men that follow us. Like, like for their represent like representation, it's probably equal to the girls because girls love the sweatshirts too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they like they like tees and sweatshirts for sure. Okay, understandable. They're comfortable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> they are. Yeah, I've just never really analyzed that because my my perception of like dudes in general, it's not that we're we're not as active about going out and kind of looking for what is that what do I want to buy to I don't, I don't know like what is stylish, what's not. Mm-hmm. I yeah. feel like I'm just not nearly as intentional as I am with like other things in my life. Right, so and, I'm, and I'm girls are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Girls are, and so I mean, it is a huge market, and it's it almost be like you know it'd be way harder to. Like if we would have started out as a men's page, I don't. We would not have catapulted the way we have. Mm-hmm. You know, so like, looking back, it's like, yeah, should we have maybe made it to where we were like, guys and girls, and made that obvious, like, a unisex page, sure. But we would not be anywhere that we are. So I love the approach. Honestly, I agree right, with right, it yeah. a lot. That's a good. I think it's a good philosophy. Yeah. No. And I mean, like, because men's there's men's pages and men's businesses that sell to women. Because you know, guys don't want to wear girls' clothes. But girls have no issue wearing yeah. guys' apparel. You that's surprising I mean? to me too. That yeah. is, that's been one of the more surprising 
bits of nuggets yeah. of information. Yeah, so I mean, like that's the part of the thing is if we can get it to where it's like more neutral and more like guys see it and follow us, the girls aren't really going to go anywhere at this point. Mm-hmm. We don't mm-hmm. think, um, and they haven't. So yeah, we're making that as long as they like it. As long as they like it. Yeah. But it's just analyzing that from like a consumer point of view of somebody that's not going to be as active as your like current following. It's like how do you reach them? Yeah. How no. do you reach those guys? Yeah, and I mean it's, it's a little more difficult than you think. Through their girlfriends, that's right. how you do it. True. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's how it happens, really. Um, we get messages that like, because guys will come pick their stuff up from their girlfriends that buy from us, mm-hmm. and then they'll message us. You know, after a little while, we'll get a follow, and they'll be like, "Yeah, my girlfriend was buying from you guys all the time, and I started to notice that like you guys are selling cool stuff, like you know, blah 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 about buying stuff, and it's kind of cool to see that that's how it happens." Okay, understandable. And we do label everything for sale in men's sizing, too. And I think that, like, it's easy for guys to buy from us, too, without directly saying, like, hey, this is men's or, hey, this is women's kind of thing. It doesn't turn the way. turn the girls off or anything. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all men's sizing. But the cool thing about the pop-ups are that, like, especially this last one, is we had a huge – so, like, with each one that we've done, we've seen more men come to them. Mm. Like two pop-ups ago or whatever, we like had our first like group of guys coming on their by own themselves. To shop <laughs> by themselves to shop. Yeah. We'd have like boyfriends coming, you know, with their girlfriends or whatever, like parents, but we hadn't had we didn't have like groups of guys coming in. So yeah, this last one we had dudes come just coming to shop, like groups of guys, guys coming on their own by themselves, like buying the stuff, like a pretty high percentage. So it is cool to see that we are like our efforts are are notice. working. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I'll, I'll tell you my personal thoughts on fashion if it helps you anything right i i feel like i'm getting to an age where i never really cared i would just kind of like wear whatever growing up and then i feel like i'm getting to an age where i've realized i actually do like kind of ex- i guess ex- what would you say self-expression yeah, in it's, that way, it's a way like, of, yeah it's expressing yeah. yourself you know like showing presenting like, yourself in different right. ways and it's like mm-hmm. oh like i like wearing for example my dad bought me a fedora the other day and just showed mm-hmm. up to the tailgate i'm like that's cool. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to try that on. And mm-hmm. and I, yeah. I tried it on, looked at myself in the mirror for like half a second. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing this to the tailgate <laughs> today. So I, I I like I like it, but it's not like I actively seek it out. So it's – I don't yeah. know. That's just my opinion of right. guys in general. Obviously, that's yeah. very broad and very uh, yeah. reduced. Right. And, and I mean – For girls, it's a priority. So I <laughs> like it's every day. I mean – Anytime a girl sees us post something cute, they don't think if they need it. They're just like, oh, I like it. I want it. Yeah. And um, I was going to say something in response to that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So part of the cool thing about vintage apparel is that, like, it's all one of one, right? Like, that what do you one, mean by that? Like, that one item that we're posting, there's one of it. We have one of it. That's really right? cool. Like, we don't have a deep product line. And people are like, so how many sizes do you have this in? We're like, no, no, no. It's just this one item, right? Because we've got to go find it out, and it's just one of each. So it is – that like nobody else is wearing what you have on like nobody else you're gonna see anybody else around here with that exact piece on so you think that's the appeal of vintage it, ha- it in has general? That a lot of it has yeah it has, it has a huge draw of, like For self-expression sure. that uniqueness that like and then that's why i like it right like i'm gonna wear a cool like an old vintage t-shirt that i have like and it's just a cool way of knowing that like one i like knowing it's vintage and old like for myself like being in like the business of it but nobody else is going to be wearing that shirt. One of a kind, yeah. It's one of a kind, right? And I like that. I like that part. And I think a lot of other people do, too. I used to – I was very into collecting baseball cards. And I don't mm-hmm. know if you guys are familiar, but there would be, like, only one out of 250 of this card. Yeah. And it does. It adds value. Same it, thing, yeah. Yeah. No, and I mean, if you could see the stats like that on a, on a sweatshirt, like, <laughs> this probably is true. Like, one of, like, 175 left in the country. Like, that that's, that's probably accurate. Um because, yeah, no, we have stuff, like, in things that we'll get in that you'll literally never see again. That's awesome. So, yeah. Is it hard? Do you guys ever get, like, emotionally attached to anything? It's like, oh, that's so I cool. I do all the time. I, will, <laughs> I, I think I do way worse than she does. It's like a puppy. It's like I get <laughs> more attached to things that aren't as, like, rare. He gets attached to the very rare things. Yeah, because, like, <laughs> I've gotten to the point now where, like, so there's a huge community of vintage resellers, like I said, like, on Instagram or just in general people. <laughs> and, like, the T-shirts and all that, like, there's shirts that go for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And I've gotten to the point now where I'm spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars yeah. on T-shirts. Um, so I have that attachment with it. But, yeah, no, we'll get in a T-shirt, you know, a rare shirt or something that we find that's worth, like, five or 600 bucks. And wow. we've had that happen before. Um, and I don't like selling them, you know. I like ha- I like keeping them. Just knowing. But just knowing, you know, that I have it or to wear it or yeah. whatever. It's just, you know, it's cool knowing, that, like, you have that item. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's more both. Like, I love the rare ones. I'm really into, like, 
classic rock band tees, but I also will find a like cool crew neck, and I'm like, eh, I have to keep it. Like, I yeah. just can't. Yeah. So our closets are full. But the yeah. cool thing <laughs> is, <laughs> it doesn't it really matter what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so since it's like vintage used clothes, anyway, anyways, you know, we'll rotate stuff in. Yeah. Like, oh, so you might have something in your closet. You're like, ah, I don't really wear that too yeah, much. I'll just sell yeah, it. Yeah, and it, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't adjust the value of it or the appeal. You know, what I mean, we wash the stuff just like anything else. And it's on its way. That's <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah, and we'll that's get pretty else cool. In, so yeah, our closets are pretty constantly rotating. I like it. Mm-hmm. So how did you guys come up with the name? Because I, I like springy jeans. It's um, it's catchy and it's location specific. But if you were to go up to Cal or go over to like California or like Oregon, no one re- would really know. There's like, no way yeah. they would know. Yeah, I don't. Re- I came it's up catchy. with it, but I well, don't yeah. know how. Naming <laughs> stuff is remember. like <laughs> naming stuff's hard. You know, like, I'm, like that's like the hardest thing about anything, like a band name or like a business name or like it's a difficult thing to come up with a good catchy name. Because you overthink it yeah. and then you say something that you like. You're like, do I actually like it or is that just corny? Right, right. Well, no, when but I, when I came up with it, I think we did intend to change it. It was just we had to have a name to like make the Instagram. Yeah, page. we were she put we were Springy Jean Co. <laughs> was our like official Insta- like our first Instagram handle. Um, and we were like Springfield it w- or was it Springfield Jean Co.? No, it was springy. Okay. But coming here, I knew that everyone called Springfield springy, and I think that's wh- that's where that came from. I don't and then the jeans cuz we were only selling jeans at the time, and I think it was just the easiest thing I could think of. It was literally the easiest of. way to come up with a name. And yeah, it stuck. Yeah, it just stuck. Um, so we've like contemplating changing it, but yeah, no, we think it does have like a lot of like people in like the name. They do. Don't change it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I yeah. like it. I really yeah. do. Yeah, no, we're, we're going to keep it. We're going to keep it. We're in too deep now to change. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, no, we were like Springy Jean Co. And then we dropped the Co. and just Springy Jeans, um, and that was it. Was history. That, that was it. Yeah. So. And here we are today. And here yeah. we are today. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, I don't know. I don't know if there are any. Actually, I know one other guy who does a podcast in Springfield. But you guys should. You guys are good at this. I don't know how much it could help your brand or yeah. whatnot. And I feel like it could. I feel like it could only help. In theory, right? So right, yeah. No, I mean, unless we were on here being assholes or like <laughs> saying our customers suck or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we have like it's, it is it is crazy though because like our success, you know, like everything that we've put into it, like whether that's like finding the product or the way that we post or do it, like we just have a really c- awesome group of followers. Mm-hmm. Like the stuff that we sell and people buy from us, like other people can't sell, and that's true. Like we're not just saying that. Like we'll post stuff that our followers are just like into and want, like for the pricing that we're asking, you know. And they're, like, super respectful, and they show out, and they're, like, understanding we have stuff going on. Like, we had to take the whole week off this past week. You know, we were out of town because, you know, like, family issues. And so we had stuff sitting here that was supposed to get shipped out that we thought we'd get back to that we weren't able to ship until today. Mm-hmm. And, like, everybody was so cool and yeah, understanding was about so it. Nice oh, about it. Like, wow. Oh, like, no problem at all. Take your time. And I thought that was cool because I was so stressed about it the whole week. Yeah, we were both super stressed. I knew, like, we like, it was me who had to go, and I was the one not shipping stuff. But – Everyone was so nice about yeah, it. Yeah, no, our, our, our success has to be, like, attributed to, like, our following. We've mm-hmm. got an awesome group of followers. So, and as that grows, it's kind of like we have our own community culture, you know, in that as we interact with them and talk to them and just the way that we operate. And, you know, they're really good sports. Like, when stuff is sold out and, like, they want something, you know, everybody's usually pretty chill about it. Um, so, yeah, no, our, like, we love our followers. We've got, like, we love the connections and meeting them and everything with the pop-ups or talking to them, like, or yeah. even being in KC this past week, we were at one oh of the yeah, stores it was crazy. on the plaza, and a girl was like, "Oh, you guys are springy jeans, aren't you?" And we were like, "Oh." Yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah, we were like, it was like a, like a, like a wow moment. You know, one of those ones are just like I'm that a just celebrity. Like, yeah, what? Like, that just happened. You know, I, afterwards, I was like, "Did you realize what just happened?" <laughs> and and she was like, "Yeah," and I was like, "But like, do you realize that like that doesn't happen to like ninety nine percent of the people like out there?" Like, it was cool. It was That's cool. awesome. That's awesome. So I guess you guys are accomplishing that goal of getting a face behind the brand as well. Yeah, no, and I mean, like I said, and, and that transitions to because, like, in the future, you know, we m- we'll probably continue selling vintage, but we want to make our own apparel, um, and we've done that with t-shirts and stuff before. But we'd like to be a jean, like springy jeans, like manufacture our own denim mm. um, at some point uh, down the line, um, and just that brand awareness with us and with who we are. So, like, le- if we get away from the vintage, it people will still associate it with us. And that Absolutely. could, yeah, that would carry on, you know, like I said, if we do something else, another business, another venture, that same familiarity with who we are will translate. So, it, yeah, it's pretty important to get yourself out there. So, I, how long have you guys been doing this again? Three years. Um, oh, it's been three years. Freshman, I'm a two junior years. now. Two, it's been two. Two official. No, it was, it's total. like 2017 is when we started, two years ago, mm-hmm. right? 
It was my freshman year. I'm a junior now. What so it was? That's been three years. It's three years. <laughs> oh my goodness. Two years of being an official business. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. No. It's uh, it's been three years that we've been doing it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. No. Sitting back, you're trying to think like it's time's flying by, mm-hmm. and it's been a year. So we actually we applied in like so we're like an actual business like. We have, like, our license, and, you know, we pay our sales tax and all that stuff, which mm-hmm. a lot of people don't do, which is surprising because we were, like – We just wanted to do it the real way yeah, and not have yeah. to worry about anything. Like getting audited or something yeah. like that, you know, or, right, pe- right. like, any – just the – it really – it builds your, like, your – like, it makes it easy to build that rapport with people. Like, yeah, we're a real business. Like, you can trust us. Right. Because we are a real business. Um, but that w- that's been a year. It was in November mm-hmm. last year. So wow. coming up on our first official year as a business, which is pretty awesome. So how do you think you built that such a loyal following? I think that because we just have always tried to put a focus on customer service um, and just engaging and being ourselves and being. um, It seems like you guys have a very authentic approach. And like what I'm taking away from all of this. Yeah. And and just very authentic, authentic. like to be authentic with who we are. And being like nice to everyone when we see them out and they do recognize us and just like. Going on with it, being like, "Yeah, we are." Like, you don't kick them. You don't <laughs> just kick all your fans. <laughs> you always like, yeah, we're always like, 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 like we're undercover right now. <laughs> like, sh- like sh- we're we're blending in. Oh, that's um, funny. Yeah, but no, like literally, Keep like down low. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, we just like put a lot of effort into building those relationships. Mm. Like that's just like one of our pillars as like a business is customer service, like customer relationship. Um, and we think, I mean, think that ha- like that it's 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 manifested in the way that they like treat us and like the way th- that we sell our product and the way inter- the interaction we get on our page. I think it also has to do with the fact that when we sell things, like we're personally replying to everyone, which with a website, it's just like they enter everything, whatever. But now we like literally have to reply to everyone. Yeah. Mm. Like and every single product we've ever sold is like a one-to-one like yeah. selling like to the person. So it personalizes It's very it personal. More. We talk to them, you know, like. So it really is literally just us talking to people all the time. All the time. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Two way communication. You don't get that very much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, with the business, like, like, it's like we said, like getting able to see us around campus, like in our classes, you know, sh- we have classes with our customers or whatever, um, or just being seen around town or like, you know, and just making sure we're smiling and nice. And, and it's not, we don't have to force that, but just making sure that, you know, we're putting on like our best self and being and just representing our business the right way. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's worked for us and it's, it's been really awesome. Do you guys see your apparel ever, like, out on campus? Or? All the time. All really? The time. All the time. In class and stuff. I'll see T-shirts. Or they're, like, driving by, and I'm like, oh, she got that from Yeah, us. or people walking around, like, you know, you can see our jeans or our shorts or, you know. Um, or I'll recognize it if I, like, distressed a pair and we see a girl wearing them walking around or whatever. <laughs> yeah, well, like, we were out at the mall the other day, and, you know, some girl came walking in and, and wearing an outfit that she bought at our pop-up. Like, oh, just wow. the whole thing, yeah. And we were like, nice outfit. And, you know, she laughed about it or whatever. But oh yeah, no, that, that happens all the time, all the time. Do you ever feel creepy? It's like, oh, that's from September of 2015. <laughs> he actually does remember dates and stuff like that. Yeah, so I'm, it I'm it really cre- like, it's like, creepy to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember like all at their followers. Names. I'll remember their at names. I'll remember what they look like. I remember what they bought, when they bought it. Like, it's it's like it's I don't know. I just have a, like it's just really easy for me to like recognize people. It's probably just really involved. Very, yeah, very yeah, involved, no, and it's cool because it. like, and I make a point about it like. When we're out and, you know, I see somebody, like, I recognize them from Springy. I'll be like, oh, hey, like, you're whatever. And they're like, yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, it, ca- it, c- it catches them off guard. Like, you recognize me, you know? And I'll be like, yeah, you got this from us or whatever. And they'll come up and I'll be like, oh, you're Springy Jeans. Like, do you remember me? Like, do you remember me? I bought this. I'm like, yeah, you did this or whatever. And it's really cool for people because I feel like it makes them feel special, you know? That's like, pretty cool. As many people as we work with, like, we recognize them. I so. never would have anticipated that, the social element as yeah. well. Yeah, like no, Just it starting is a business and actually, like making friends out of it. Right. Sure. Especially like with like being in a community like Springfield, right? Like I mean it's a, it's a small town. Absolutely. Um and in respects, I mean yeah, it's big, but like uh so we see a lot of people out like all the time. So like and we're really like we have a lot of pride in being from Springfield. I mean Springy Jeans is our name, you know. So, yeah, no we love it. Li- lo- we love the community and it's really cool being able to engage with them. Very cool. I wish I remembered people like he does. I have a very bad memory, though, so I, I don't remember anyone <laughs> ever. Do you think it's because he deals with them, like, online a lot more? Uh, I'd say we equally deal yeah. with them. I just literally have a bad memory. <laughs> yeah. So, like, in classes and stuff, I never remember anyone. And I wish I did, but 
I don't know. You give yourself some credit. <laughs> I'm just I'm just creepy about it. like I'm just like overly <laughs> yeah, it's just like every time we're out and he calls me by their at name or something. I'm just like, <laughs> I would never even yeah. remember that. Well people don't even know how I like they're like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, it's one of my skills, one of my talents, I guess. Well, if it makes you feel any better, and or if it makes you feel any less creepy, I I used to be that way a lot more. I'm not too much that way right. anymore, but I would always remember like what episode, um, and like who I had on, like yeah. episode no, 93 it, was with this person, right? You know? And I mean, if you care about it, and I'm not not saying that she doesn't, um, but like if you genuinely care about it, you know, it 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 makes it easy. Mm-hmm. Like I I care to know people's like names and what who they are, and like I want to know like remember what they bought. And, like, if I see somebody and I'm, like, trying real hard to, like, who are they, what they get. Like, I mean, I'll look it up sometimes. But, like, because I, I want to be able to show that, like, I care. Yeah, um, totally, totally. Yeah, no, but I mean, and like I said, if you're working on something and you care about it, it's really easy to make those connections and to remember it. Like, it Absolutely. Just, it just kind of sticks. Yeah, it's interesting. Or we're creepy. Yeah, or, 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 or we're, discre- or we're yeah. creepy. <laughs> I try. I just, I got nothing. I can't remember anyone. <laughs> I want to I feel too bad about it. <laughs> Awesome. Do you guys have any other? I think I've went through all the questions on here. Yeah. No, I think you hit those. Um, yeah. No, I think we. I think we pretty much talked about a lot of the stuff with us. First podcast. What'd you guys think? A lot easier than I had thought. Yeah, I was. I was expecting worse. Honestly, My I am just so awkward. I don't know. So I like when we do stuff like this. Or like last week, we did an interview for someone at a high school, and they were like filming us straight on, just sitting. I was so bad at it, <laughs> but no, this wasn't as bad. Do you think part of it's getting over the sound of your own voice? I know that's really com- like common feedback. Not too bad in these. I couldn't have handled it. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't bother me, but, like, I talk a lot. And, like, my mouth is dry from talking, That's also, that's a bonus <laughs> for me, because he can usually cover most of it, so I just get to fill in a little bit. Yeah, no, and, I mean, I really enjoy these opportunities, because, like I said, like, it's very girl-oriented, and she is the face of our business. And a lot of people, like, don't realize that, one, I even exist, or two, like, that I'm actually yeah, involved. I love when he gets to be able to, like, make himself known. Because it's not just me. And yeah. Hey, he's real. I, yeah, yeah. And he's I'm, real. I'm real. Look at him. He's I, real. Yeah, and I don't want people to think it's just me. It's yeah. definitely. It, it used to be, like, people, you know, like, wouldn't even, like, and not that I have, like, a chip that I need people to know, like, for mm-hmm. a pride thing. But it's just like, yeah, no, I, I do this too. Like, it is, like, I'm not just the boyfriend or whatever. Like, I'm taking the pictures. Like, you're talking to me, like, mm-hmm. a lot of the times. Um, so yeah, no, I like being able to get out there and like put, put my face on the page also. Very cool. Very cool. And you do a well, good job. Uh, I'm assuming at least it seems like you do a great job with making it very personal as well. Yeah, no, I mean, I love talking and getting to meet everybody. So yeah, no, this has been a lot of fun. Yeah. I think you guys were great. I think you guys are great. Yeah. And thanks. No, it, I would, I would, I don't know how much podcast could help, but I'm assuming it'd be like free publicity, free marketing. Well, we'll y- take any we can get. Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> any opportunity to get a talk and like be uh, interviewed or you know do this and even though you know it was h- a little hard for us to pan out our schedule um we definitely wanted to make sure we had the time to allocate for this because yeah it's publicity and a lot of fun awesome and i'll i'll put everything i'll put like your ad name and everything and cool. if you want you can send it over and i'll just put it all in the description and whatnot okay cool so yeah make it easy for anybody to find you if they happen to stumble upon this episode okay awesome yeah we appreciate it. and good job with the interview as well like yeah Thank you. You're Thank a you. good. You're a good host. At all? Yeah, you're the good host. Is like, I mean, there's those stalls, especially when you're first meeting someone, where it's like, okay, fuck, what am I gonna say next? Exactly. Like, but yeah, no, you did a great job of like keeping it continued. Thank you. Yeah, usually I'm. Uh, it's more of like an open conversation, so this is a little bit different. Right. But this is kind of how I started off in the beginning yeah. as well as having like a list of questions and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. But I learned a lot. I learned cool. a lot. So cool. thank you guys. All right. Yeah. And I mean, we'd love to be back at some point. <laughs> oh, absolutely. If you have more questions for us. At yeah, it'd point. be. Uh, I'm, I graduate in December, but we could probably fit something in before okay. now and then. So Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.